So last fall, I realized that I was pretty unhappy with the state of my wardrobe. I could go hunting in this. There were a lot of things in there that did not make me feel good. So I did the best that I could to refresh my wardrobe in a sustainable manner. Meaning I went to a lot of thrift stores and created a capsule wardrobe and only purchased brand new items when I really needed to. Capsule wardrobes are a way of curating your closet and your style with a select series of seasonal pieces. There are all kinds of resources online for how you should do a capsule wardrobe, but everybody's situation and lifestyle is totally different. The resource that I found to be the most realistic and helpful was The Curated Closet by Anushka Reese, I think was her name. I found creating a capsule wardrobe to be very fun, kind of soothing in a way because now I just open up my closet and I can mix and match any of my pieces. There's only a few to choose from. I feel good in every single piece of clothing that I own and I have just fewer choices to pick from in the morning. So it just feels like something I don't have to worry about ever again. It's also really satisfying knowing that a lot of the clothing that I did get was purchased or acquired in a more sustainable manner. But all of that was for fall and winter and I mean looking outside today it sure as heck still looks like winter but it's mid-April and before you know it it's going to be summer. I swear to you two days ago it was 18 degrees Celsius and then we got hit with this. <laughs> so though today I am not ready to put away my cozy knits, I will be very soon and I need to do the exact same process that I did last time but for a spring and summer capsule wardrobe. Something that's going to help my wardrobe remain flexible between seasons is actually sticking with the same color palette and I actually like that color palette quite a bit. I think this earthy green looks really good on me. I like this gold shade because it just gives me like a pop of sunshiny yellow and I think for summer though the one thing that'll change is like maybe leaning a bit more away from blacks. I feel like it might be a bit too hot in the summer but I also really like black so we'll see. <laughs> So since my last capsule wardrobe, I've been pulling a lot of inspiration off of websites like Everlane. I really like their style, I just don't like the way they treat their employees. I'm really into these loose shirts like linen and peasant blouses, flowy dresses. I'm also really drawn to 1950s fashion. My mom sent me some photos of my grandma and I think these outfits are really cute and classy so I want to kind of get that vibe going. I, don't, I won't like base my whole wardrobe around it but I do like that style. Big fan of like these loose shirts with the tapered cuts and the pants with the loafers. Grace Kelly has definitely been my muse throughout this process. Overall, I'm just drawn to loose linens and cottons, casual and light clothing, the vibe I'm really going for. And again, I just use this as like a reference. I don't actually stick to this, but I, I want to go for breezy, loose and comfortable breathable and effortless. That's how I would describe my ideal summer capsule wardrobe. However, one thing I do need to buy that does not fit into like most of my wardrobe is cowgirl jeans. <laughs> I have cowboy boots and I've been wanting to wear them for a long time. I need jeans that fit over top of the outside of the boot that's very hard to find. So I need to go to Cowtel, which is a western shop here in Brandon, and I need to find jeans that fit. I don't know if they'll let me try things on, I haven't been there yet, um, but we're going to Cowtel and then we're gonna find some western jeans. I have tried to thrift pants many times in the past and it just doesn't work with my sizing. I think last time I tried on like 70 pairs of pants and I really, I really wanted to buy them secondhand and none of them fit and it was just really frustrating. So we're not gonna do that, it's a waste of time. I'm just gonna go to Cowtown and spend some money to my heart's desire to get the jeans that I want that will fit over my boots. <laughs> Pro tip, save your color palette or your inspirational photos on your phone so you don't get distracted when you're thrifting and put those little blinders on so that you don't buy things that you don't really need. It will still happen, but it will happen to less of an extent. So let's go thrifting.
<laughs> okay, I'm home now. <laughs> I went to Cowtown and I got two pairs of jeans at Cowtown that fit over my cowboy boots, which I'm super excited about. They fit really well. Also, if you've been watching my last capsule wardrobe series, you know that pants are an issue because of the height. And so imagine you add another couple of inches with a cowboy boot heel and then you really have a problem with trying to find pants. So I'm really glad that I got these two. I'm very happy, very excited. They're high rise. You'll see them in the lookbook reveal video. Value Village, okay, Value Village is, ah, uh, how do I describe Value Village? It's the most expensive thrift store. I did actually go thrifting once there already, <laughs> and I found some things I liked, but then I was, I don't know why I did this, I wasn't thinking straight, and I tried to buy pants, and that was just stupid, <laughs> to be quite frank and beans, because I bought all these pants that didn't fit me, and Value Village has a policy right now, you cannot try things on in their store, they won't let you try anything on, and you can't return, you can only exchange. So I basically overpurchased, and then you can't get your money back unless you exchange it for something else, so I bought some baskets. I bought these baskets and I think they were great, so they were $20 for these. I know this has nothing to do with my wardrobe. I hope I didn't just break them. But I had to spend the money somewhere because Value Village won't let me give my money back. I also bought a couple of puzzles, so I'll have to do those, I guess. And I did buy some items of clothing that will work, I hope. I haven't tried them on yet. I have to wait and see. And then I went to Super Thrift. Super Thrift was... Fine. One thing that they did was they color coordinated all of their clothing on the racks so you could just go up and say I like red shirts and there would be like a bunch of red shirts there. Um, and I thought that was really nice especially for someone like me who's specifically looking for color. But in general like I didn't like the stuff that they had. I don't know if it was maybe a certain age range it seemed to be like older women's fashion. I did find one shirt and I think I like it. It was only $1.99. The weird part about that location is you have to pay for parking, unless there's maybe free parking that I just didn't know about. And then I went to MCC and I was getting this, you know, typical shot of the sign. Every time I go thrifting, I try to get a picture of the outside of the shop that I'm going to so that, you know, it's just B-roll, like nothing crazy. <laughs> Apparently it was crazy because I was taking this shot that you're gonna see here and immediately afterwards I start walking up to the building to go in that door right there and this man comes out. Hey friends, it's editing Leanne here. So I just need to tell this story again because I was very riled up when I told it in this video. So basically this man comes out of MCC. He came out of nowhere. I don't know where he came from and he says to me, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> right off the bat, can we just agree that that's an aggressive way to come at someone just to ask them what they're up to? <laughs> I just have to say that so you understand the vibe of this conversation, like I'm not exaggerating anything anything I'm about to say. So I explained that I was just making a, a vlog for my YouTube channel, I'm just capturing some of the outside of the building for some background uh, footage, and he asks, why do you need footage of the outside of our building? What do you mean you're a YouTuber? What is that? What kind of YouTuber are you? <laughs> And he's totally serious face at this point. And in my head I'm thinking like, <laughs> did some other YouTuber hurt you? <laughs> like what happened here? I make videos about productivity, sustainability, and my lifestyle. Um, I don't make videos about anti-thrifting or anti-MCC. You are a thrift store. You are not Planned Parenthood. Like what happened here <laughs> to make you come at me like this? Nonetheless, after a little bit of back and forth and him like, giving me the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, I apologized and I offered to delete the footage. I didn't realize that it was a problem. I completely felt like I was getting in trouble just for getting this really shitty B-roll that I got. And I didn't really know why I was in trouble. <laughs> then he says, no, don't worry about it. I'm just giving you a hard time. And then he immediately turns around and says something else about like, don't film anything else. And then he goes back again and says that I can film anything I want. I don't know what this guy was getting at, and um, in the end he was clearly having a great time tossing me back and forth on his fun little merry-go-round or whatever the heck game he was playing, but it was not funny to me because I take people's privacy very seriously. I try to be really careful about not including people in like the background of my videos if I'm in public, if possible. It's not always possible, but I try to. That's why I often film at such a crappy angle in like Value Village or something because I'm trying not to get my surroundings too much. Anyways, it was just like a really irritating encounter and I just didn't know what the heck was going on, but back to the video. 
All I could think was, I don't want to be here anymore. I don't know if you're gonna like sue me for my 200 subscriber YouTube channel. <laughs> Nonetheless, I went into the building and I got some shorts for $1.87, so I guess it was worth it. <laughs> Would I go back there? <laughs> I mean, not for the people. <laughs> As of right now, I'm pretty happy with what I've chosen and what I've got, so I can't wait to show you everything. And yeah, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week.